The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. And me, well, I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. (laughs) 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 I'm your your youngest one, Griffin McElroy. Why do we we laugh? We record these on Thursdays. We have no fucking idea what kind of a weekend... Ahead of us, we have laughter may not be the order of the day come come Monday afternoon, but I I don't know, man. May as well laugh when you can, right? Right. <laughs> hey, all things considered, not a bad week. <laughs> all things considered, not a bad week. Comparatively, 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 you know, all things considered, all things considered. If I you am, were to take all things a, into consideration, not a bad week. Here's what I was gonna say. I was just gonna say I'm just going to say this one thing. Okay. Yeah. If you told me one calendar year ago that the week that contained a day that I woke up think with a fever thinking I had a deadly virus, then got tested for that deadly virus, and I would think of that week as a pretty good week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would have not believed what you were saying. I would not have believed it. But that situation did transpire. Yeah. Everything's fine. Uh, uh, but di- uh, But still, pretty good week. You know, if you had told me... When I was a young lad of, say, eight or nine, that there would come a week where a fly landing on someone's head was national news, so I would have laughed in your face. So fucking funny. And he I would have laughed there. in your face. The bug landed there because it, because it was shit, and he smelled the shit, and he wanted to eat it and barf on it, which is what That's pretty much do. what everyone's going with. So uh, shit. It's fucking good, man. I do want to point out two things. One, still very bad things. Ha- oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. Ter- a terrible, terrible, terrible week. But also, it's Thursday at 1.42 Central Time, which is the only time zone that matters to me. I, by the time this episode comes out, we're, we are there are three days, dudes, where t- totally not righteous stuff can, will. Yeah, will. Uh, yeah, we're recording this several days before, so absolutely. So I don't know why you guys are calling this this fucking wild. I guess it's a, <laughs> calendar. I'm going by calendar since last Thursday, uh-huh. Thursday to Thursday. Not yeah, that week. Now so, let me say this: if if we were able to uh, cut and paste this week into yeah. say like 2011, this yeah. would have been the worst week of 2011. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like that's what I'm talking about. But then, here fly, in, in a 2020, fly, a fly landed on our American vice president's head. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been ironic? Would have landed on Joe Biden's head back in 2010. Oh, now the dots are starting to connect. Thank you, Travis. The fly was yeah, a little saying, tiny drone. That's why wild to think about. But it's yeah. definitely true. Now, true. here's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we going to say, man, I hope this isn't true, but like in 2030, yeah. we'll look back on this Don't week this. and be no, like, that's Nobody can s- withstand this. Oh, you're probably right. Or maybe we'll look back and be like, there's no way that week happens. If but- I'm still allowed to think in t- 2030, I will consider that a success. That's fair. Yeah. That will be a, a, a high watermark. That is fair. Right. That is fair. This is my brother, my brother, me. It's a vice show for the modern era. We're so happy to be here with you. We got it's a special be... guest, the fly. <laughs> here he is. I can't buzz, believe buzz, buzz, buzz. That's the I landed bitch. on the dude's head because it's uh, his. The things they're saying is total bullshit. So, are but... you voting for Joe Biden? I'm actually, uh, as all bugs are, a registered libertarian. I've heard oh. jargons and like Ken Bone. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a thought, you guys. Can you imagine? Here we are, four years later, to be Ken Bone and to look at the news and realize I share the same amount of like public affection 
as a fly does now. Like in 2016, he Kim is bone, fly. the fly. He was is the fly. The Kim bone of 2020. The, the fly is the Kim bone. The Kim bone is the fly. That must be a sobering realization. I cannot believe. Can we briefly? I'm just going to briefly talk about Ken Bone, who is, by the way, not a good person. No. <laughs> no Judging okay. by the Reddit history, not a good person, Ken Bone. So I want to say that up front, established. Uh, second thing I want to say can you imagine there was a person who was so hee haw stupid <laughs> that they couldn't pick who they wanted to be the president? And a real <laughs> reporter, a paid reporter, was like, I have got to check back in with that dude yeah. and see where his head was at. He was so, so absolutely out of his melon that he couldn't make a decision. I wonder where his head is at now. This is a big thinker. I got to see where he's at. A free thinker. A Maybe. free thinker. Think of it, think of it that way, Juice. Yeah, he's free to take his vote and flush it right on the fucking toilet. Okay. Ken Bone also... Um, Probably doesn't. He probably only owns red sweaters, right? Like he doesn't. At this leave the point, house he's a full like blown. Money. Yeah, he's a full blown bone. Full blown bone. That's his thing. You know what I mean? Like he only knows how to be Ken Bone. I hope he's doing the con circuit. Anyway, listen. I hope he's not. Because if he is, I'm gonna have to see him, and I'm gonna have to say, I wish they could have gotten the fly. <laughs> red. It's too bad the fly is too popular. God, we could do more fly stuff, but you know it's going to be on SNL, and this will come out after SNL. Oh, that we're beating. Well, up. let's call it. Oh, let's call it. This will be fun. We're recording this uh, three days before then. What do you think is going to? I think it'll be probably a weekend update bit. Fuck. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. It's in the intro. Oh, it's really? Like they zoom in on the fly, and it's like Fred Armisen is back to oh, be the fly. Oh, shit. Oh, that's good. That's good. What if it's like a uh, Godfather kind of thing where okay. uh, they got Jim Carrey. He's playing Joe Biden. And Joe Biden is like sitting at his desk, but it's like, you know, one downward light and the fly comes and Joe Biden's like, you did it. The thing I, yeah, now what can I do for you? And the fly's like, I just want a big pile of shit. Yeah. To, uh, to like do rails of or whatever. I don't, yeah. I haven't seen Godfather. And then Joe Biden's like, you got it. Live from New York, it's Saturday it's night. Good. That's yeah. it, that's it, that's it. Didn't watch, couldn't bring myself to watch Jim Carrey's Joe Biden uh, because I just saw the thumbnail image and I was like, I don't think my anxiety over this election is so high that I do not need the, my man Ace Ventura in there sort of poking about my neurons, getting them all twisted up, getting me, bu I mean, busting, busting my gut, busting my family's gut for sure. I guess um, I just worry that if I saw it, it would bust my gut so hard that all my intestines would spill out. Yeah. Happens which would sometimes. be pretty spooky. Uh, yeah. Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, all right. Oh, Let's... the fly. Sexy the fly is going to be huge this Halloween. Oh, my oh. God. Sexy the fly. I mean, flies what? are already. Uh... <laughs> uh... What if they get go What if they get Goldblum? Oh. Uh, what if they get Goldblum? What if they get Goldblum? Oh. Okay, let's help. Last week, after working at my current job for nearly two and a half years, my boss finally granted me lockup privileges. Nice. That is, of course, if you haven't been in a job for a while, you are allowed to lock up uh, insubordinate employees Correct. until they mm -hmm. uh, do things the subway way. Right, in the in the boo-boo box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which when is he, also where they keep the vegetables. When he gave me the key, he said, now, don't you lose this. And throughout the week, he kept telling me to take good care of it. At the end of the last day, before I was going to open the store by myself for the first time, he said, you sure you're ready? You haven't lost the key? I got so annoyed that I kind of snapped, no, I haven't lost it since the last time you asked. Now, I'm sure you can tell where this is going, because when I got home, I couldn't find the damn key mm -hmm. anywhere. So please, how the hell do I tell my boss that I lost the freaking key? <laughs> do I just not open the store tomorrow and hope he doesn't notice? How will I ever gain back his misplaced trust us from locked out and ashamed? How oh, you're never going to... You're never gonna gain back that trust. How did you? Look. How did? How could you possibly have fucked this up so bad? I'm so frustrated with you. You got. I'll tell you my theory. My yeah. theory, as you like, when your boss handed it to you, it fell out of your pocket as you were leaving the room, like that long ago, and your boss picked it up and was like, "Well." Okay. I'm gonna give them a fucking hard time about yeah, this. Yeah, I love that. That's very possible. The boss knew the whole time. Oh yeah, or the boss stole it. Yeah, um, they, I mean, they caught me. If you can, do you? I have a good. I mean, to use another film reference as a solution, it's a Wonderful Life. 
Huh. Huh. And then oh, every, all your Uncle the, Billy. Your Uncle, your Uncle Billy, you lost the key or the money or the key. And so George is like, um, this sucks. But then the I'm whole, fucked. I'm, I'm fucked, fucked, old man. I told Fuck, my you fucked me, Billy. I told my boss. You, you fucked me, <laughs> Billy. Billy, I'm fucked. You make me look like a real fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, oh, Billy. Well, 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 well. You fucked me in the ass, Billy. Um, Billy, I got Bill, kids, Billy. You fuck. I'm, I'm an angel. Billy, you fuck. You're fucking me in front of my kids. I'm an angel sent by Jesus, but I can't even around all Billy, this. Billy, this. are you pulling my hair? Are you pulling my hair? Because I like to have my hair pulled when I get fucked, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a long uh, interruption for what is not going to be a very good idea. But I was saying that all the townspeople who you've helped with your generosity and selflessness over the years will come and give you their keys. Uh-huh. Now, just... unless, those, unless those townspeople live at the subway, Griffin, it's not going to help. I think that one of the keys will be close enough to fit that it'll open the door. That's true. You could use God's keys, which is what I call a brick. Okay. Smash that door in. And then when your boss comes, you say, I found it like this, boss, but I'm not leaving here until it gets repaired. And bad news, somebody stole the key, too, out of my pocket while I was picking up glass. <laughs> What's bad is like I was going to suggest that. So oh. that is actually troubling. What, Actually. the smashing the window or the stealing the key? Smashing the window, you put a brick through the window, you reach around, you open it, and they're like, they got they got you. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, boss, but they got you. They got, got you again. Good. Classic prank. Um, the old window brick. I have, can I do a Yahoo? Yeah, I'd love that. This one's sent in by Steven. Thank you, Steven. It's Yahoo Answer, anonymous Yahoo Answers user. So I'm oh, gonna... sorry, real quick, to jump back. You should tell your boss you lost it, because yeah. the satisfaction they'll feel at that will- What a gift. Yeah. It'll be so overwhelmingly positive for them. Uh, Brandon asks, stupid Power Rangers question. Oh, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. No such thing, but go on. There are no su- There's no such thing as a stupid Power Rangers question, just stupid people. Just stupid Power Rangers. Act, stupid actors. In the beginning of the show, when Zordon needs new Power Rangers, why did he uh-huh. ask for teenagers with attitudes? Wouldn't it be better to get some guys that have formal special ops training? <laughs> it just seems irresponsible. No. Oh, God, that is a stupid... I'm sorry, that is a stupid question. Obviously, Zordon wanted to be able to train him, them himself. Right? If you get people with special ops training, they're going to do it the way they've been trained. Okay, but Zordon doesn't ever pop out of his, like, hollow hologram display and is like, let me show you teens how to do a real bicycle kick. (laughs) This is where to put your hands to snap a man's neck. And that fucking robot's not teaching him how to do how to do no, their no, moves. No. Alpha five? No way. No way. So they just like, they have their little power coins and that that gives them all the training they need. Zordon doesn't teach them shit. So a little bit of like endemic, systemic fighting knowledge in mm-hmm. a, in a stable adult, like with a, with a 401k, like somebody who is financially oh. independent and, you know, has has their... It just they're very confident in themselves. Okay, Griffin, let's try that out. I'll okay. be the adult with formal special ops training, like yeah. I have, and you are Zordon trying to recruit me to your Power Ranger group, I okay. guess. Okay. Tody, I am Zordon. I know that you know all kinds of cool fighting moves, and you have a yeah. big job with the city and That's an true. apartment in the city. You... <laughs> are in a long-term dating relationship. <laughs> yeah, it's getting pretty serious. And you, your fighting abilities are, they exist, and you can do them. Yes, I can. So, uh, Rita Repulsa is back, and she's what? got all of her gooey guys doing okay. their bad stuff. <laughs> and okay, we, what do you want me to do? Well, I'm going to, I'll let me fucking finish. Okay. I have this little power coin, and it lets you turn it. It p- changes your clothes into different, uh, like a superhero clothes, and then you will get sometimes a dinosaur robot. Huh. Well, I like the dinosaur robot part, but yes. like, what does it pay? I don't. I told you about the power coin and the dinosaur robot. No, I know that, but like, you will as get you mentioned, a... I have an apartment. I need to pay rent. Like, what's what's the pay? Excuse me for a moment, Tony. 
Okay. Can my girlfriend's kids come hang out yeah. at the power base or whatever? Because sometimes I and like, what's parking and like, what's the healthcare scenario? I actually up- watch them. She goes to night school, so I actually watch them. Yeah. a lot of the time they're so, cool. Like, Most the, you can give them like a Paw Patrol coloring book, and they'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine, or make them. Uh, what's it? Power people or yeah, whatever? Can they be like tiny power people? Wait, why like, didn't I think of that? I can just make everyone on Earth power people. And then, yeah. and then Rita's really fucked, isn't she? Good well, luck have with you thought you. about like restructuring? What's a robot for? I mean, no offense, robot, but like... Well, sometimes the gooey guys get real big, Tony. Uh-huh. Do you think Zordon's ever like, you didn't lose your morpher, did you? <laughs> did you? Did you? Promise me. Uh, yeah, Zordon, sorry. My mom found my morpher and she used it, so now she's just flying a pterodactyl around. My mom found my morpher and she thought it was a bong and she grounded me, <laughs> Zordon. Now I can't do any crime fighting today. So thanks so much, Zordon. Thanks so much. Please FaceTime my mom. and Please take my mom on a date. So she will Zordon, be... I need you to seduce my mom. <laughs> Zordon, Zordon, seduce my mom so she'll leave the house and I foil Rita Repulsa's plans once again. How many fucking times do I have to tell you, Dad? I mean, Zordon. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, oh. Zordad. Uh, fuck. Sorry, uh. Uh. Happens to me all the time. Get the fuck out of here, Alfie. I'm st- get out of here. What is the robot's name? Isn't it Alpha 5? It's Alpha Five. Alpha as I Five. Said. Okay. Sure. 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 Do you think the Power Rangers ever asked Zordon to, for help with their homework? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. There's probably an Alpha Five's a robot. Just do my. Hey, listen. Here's the deal. If you want me to fight Reader and Palsy, you gotta do my homework for me, Alpha Five, because I can't get it. They're gonna. These kids are gonna be so busy fighting crime. Yeah. They're gonna go to college and they're gonna be like. So anyway. Open your books. And they're like, I never learned to read. <laughs> I was too busy punching a big, I don't know, octopus thing. Uh, hey, Zordad, how, how do you ask a girl on a date? Ah, uh, you just teleport her to your sp- <laughs> science station. <laughs> give her a big coin. I don't, I don't think that's okay. Well, that doesn't seem right. Have you tried showing her? Your xenon crystals. No. <laughs> no, no yeah, I, 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 think, I mean, not without consent. I didn't think she would like my xenon crystals. I think if I did get visited by an angel of Zordon's and uh-huh. they offered me to be a grown-up power ranger, I would probably, and like they would give me a coin that let me transform into cool suits and get a dinosaur robot. I still think it's going to be a no. Like, as yeah. neat as that sounds, it's it also sounds like... A great, a great deal of work for what, as Justin pointed, or as Travis pointed out, one of you fucking guys pointed out, is an unpaid internship with a space, yeah. with and, a space alien. And if I'm being honest, I mean, I'm 36 years old, almost 37. I got two kids, but the truth is, being a Power Ranger is a level of responsibility I don't think I could handle. And yeah. I don't even mean like fighting the bad guys. I mean, those Zords look pretty difficult to pilot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I fucked that up pretty bad. And I don't think you can get insurance on those dang things. It's just that Rita's going to keep sending her gooey guys. Right. So, like, it's easy for me to, like, say, no, I don't want this responsibility. And somebody, you know, braver with me with more free time would say yes, but I guess that makes me a bad person. Shit. No. The teenager thing would have made sense if he had only gotten homeschool kids. Mm. Okay. Go, go, Mighty Morphin, homeschool kid, Power Rangers. Now, why because is that? Because then it's like they have incredible, like, adult-shaped bodies, lithe, powerful, in the prime Gross. of their lives. Okay. But they also, like, don't have to be in school. They could just sort of tell their mom, like, listen, mom, I'm going to go, I don't know, actualize or something. What do homeschool parents That's like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. That, that kind of I'm thing. I'm going to meditate. Hey, weren't the big bad Beetleborgs, like, literally 10... We actually, um, Travis, I got a letter. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I got a letter from podcasts that we ha- are, we as a podcast have talked about Big Bad Beetleborgs the maximum number oh, of times. Oh, we used up our Big Bad Beetle it. quota. Yeah. Yeah, we did. It looks like in um, 2022, more slots are going to open up, Trav. So, oh, so yeah, like yeah. episode six, like 623 or so, if my math adds up, maybe we can. I'll save it. What we are doing is entering into sort of a cap and trade situation with 99% Invisible, which to my knowledge has never talked about Big Bad Beetleborg. Yeah, that's the other 1%. That's the 1% right there. We're buying some of their credits uh, in exchange 
we have to plug uh, the 99% Invisible City, the new book yeah. from Roman Mars, and 99% Invisible. We have to plug that. And then they, uh, in exchange uh, for talking about their the fantastic book, we're going like, to get a few credits to talk about Big Bang. Okay, Daniel. why was the house haunted? Doesn't that seem like a hat on a hat? Yeah, you're you're fighting things in your big bad beetle blog crossing, but also your house is like a haunted house. What the fuck? That's really how you're gonna, huh? Well, that's all right. I'm gonna use it. You guys let me try. Let me one. try this. Okay. Uh, boy, howdy! The genie character sure looks offensive, but I can't put my finger on <laughs> to which. I think peoples. it's only to Jay Leno. It's offensive to Jay Leno's. Wow, I... he does sure look a hell of a lot like Joseph Leno. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good amount. The. Uh, yeah, it's a good amount that a uh, flabber looks like uh, Joseph Leno. It does kind of look like someone said, hey, can you draw Joseph Leno from memory? And they said, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Do you think the Power Rangers ever went to Zordon's secret cave when there wasn't stuff to do and they just wanted somebody to talk to? Yeah. With Z- I'm not really comfortable <laughs> with this. This isn't like a social thing. This isn't, I, I have other things that, I, I don't think you did. I have my own friends. I like to separate work and home. <laughs> I'm binging justified. This isn't my thing. No spoilers, I'm only on season two. Now leave me in my giant bong. <laughs> <laughs> My parents have been fighting a lot lately. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Do you oh, want Oh, what's an- that? Oh, Rita's attacking the oh, no. aquarium. Do you want another t- another mammoth robot? Uh, <laughs> let me see what I, Hold on. Let me see what I got in the back. Um, okay, I'm going to send you to the moon? Is that what's, anything? We got a I got a plesiosaur robot back here. Will that help with your parents fighting? <laughs> Probably I don't think so, Zordon. I, I brought Tommy so. back from the dead. How does well, that make you feel? Huh? It's pretty Fine, wild. I guess. Okay. Uh here's another question. I was out on my lunch break running a few errands when I spotted a taco truck. It honestly sounded amazing, so I pulled over. A few problems though. Truck was parked in the parking lot of fire station, and everyone in line had matching shirts. Who was this taco truck only for the firefighters and everyone working mm. there? How do I get in on this lunch? That's from Desperate for Tacos in Des Moines. This is this is boys. This is a choice cut. This is a this is a quandary that I feel like nobody has really tried to solve. So like I feel like we have an opportunity right here to to plant our flag in this fertile ground. Now I'm going. I'm going to give the question asker the benefit of the doubt, and say that if the food from said truck had been given away for free, that would have been mentioned in the question, right? So yes. I'm going to assume that this wasn't like, ah, oh, the the chief paid for lunch for everybody or whatever. No, it's the the, the here. There's a food truck here, and yeah. they're selling their food, and you can come and get it. But there's a. This is clearly a function. This is clearly a firefighter function. And but, but there's what's the harm in? Yeah, it's a business. It's you know? a they, business. They do mm. want to make money. Now, here's where I would feel bad if we're being honest. I hop last in line, thinking like, "Well, I'll go last," and then some other firefighters line up behind me. Yeah, and they're waiting behind me. Do I need to rotate back and stay in the back of the line because I'm not a firefighter? Mm. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Or else you're not going to get your your great, you know, kimchi fries or whatever it is that you're getting from this food truck. Honesty, I yeah, wouldn't. Please, I I wouldn't do it. Well, but, no. But I'm afraid of firefighters. Yeah. <laughs> this is I, I wouldn't do it because I'm afraid of doing the wrong thing in public. Yeah. Um, so I, I would worry that I would get up there and someone somewhere on earth might think, well, he shouldn't do that. Yeah. And, and that, and then I would melt into the ground and die. Um, I'm, and, and it's so also, that's what I need to avoid. With a food truck, there's always the concern that you hand them the money and then they just drive, a, drive away. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. that's happened to me so many times where I go, I'm like, ooh, a, a nice uh, uh, gooey burger. I'll take one. Here's fif- here's $15. Vroom, mm-hmm. gone. Every, it's like every time. Every time? Yeah, I'm starting to think about it, guys. It's every, I've never actually gotten food out of a truck. They always huh. take my money and just drive right You know up. what, Griffin, now that you mention it, yeah. there's not as many food trucks here in Cincinnati. Yeah. But, yeah. 
every time. Huh. I did. I I actually, I, they got a new one called Bite Me. It's a food truck with Asian street food type stuff. You got, wait, and, you got food trucks in Huntington? Well, sort of. It was in Barbersville. Uh-huh. It was parked outside the Family Dollar that used to be a Rite Aid. Uh-huh. You know? Glow up. Upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> I drove up. I drove. Uh, I drove up there, right? And because I wanted, I saw on Facebook they were there, and they were moving around a lot. So I was like, I'd love to try this truck. So I get in the car and I drive up with my fam. I put my family in the car. Okay. Well, okay. That's your and first And I drive mistake. up there. I get my mask. I think, well, you know, we haven't had any sort of dining experiences uh, in terms of like sitting in a restaurant or anything. And I'm not going to sit in this truck, but I feel like it's fairly safe for me to roll up there with my mask, get me some food, eat it in my car. So I drive up there and I go to the guy and I walk up uh, to the truck and I'm kind of standing there and he's kind of looking at me and I'm kind of looking at him and he's got a Legend of Korra t-shirt on. That's not relevant. Just I want to get a little color in there. Yeah. And I'm I'm kind of standing there like a dummy. And then eventually he's like, as if he doesn't know why I'm there, it just occurs to him. And he's like, sorry, we are sold out of everything. Oh. And it's like, I, I, I am me, so I'm instantly uh, mortified that I have bothered this person who no longer has food. So I start compuls- compulsively congratulating him on such a <laughs> nice <laughs> sales day. Normal. That's wonderful. I, yeah, I was just checking. Uh, you You win. Uh, I just wanted to stop by and say, I heard that you did it. And I just wanted to confirm you did it. He said, and then he said, we won't be here next week, but we'll be here the week after that. Now, I want to say two things about this person's business strategy. One, they did not tell me where they would be next week. Mm. (laughs) So there's other places I can go to. You saw my car. It's five feet away. Right. He would not reveal to me where he was going to be. So it might have been a secret firefighter only invitational is the one thing I want to say about this. The other thing I want to say is like, when you ran out of food in your food truck and you've told people where your food truck is, shouldn't you at that point drive, (laughs) drive away to a different location. Your restaurant is empty. It's no longer a restaurant. Now it's just a truck mm. with a picture of a walk on the outside. Please drive away. Please don't make me walk up to your empty truck. That would be like me walking up to, at, at that point, I'm walking up to any truck. Yeah. And just expecting you to got food? food. Hey, you got food? Well, and here, just a, it, it, feel like the asshole. if I might suggest, a food truck saves you. Like, if you're in a restaurant, right, you have to wait for food uh, supplies to be delivered to you. If you run out of food in your food truck, might I suggest driving to the store? Yeah. Just go get some more food. And then come back and keep making more money. Do you think one of the toughest parts of owning a food truck is investing in a really good hiding place for your food truck? Because yeah. it, and you can't you can't be able to... People shouldn't be able to see it. Yeah. If it's not, if you aren't slinging right. bergs. So, like, you need, it's a truck, so it's big. So, like, getting garage space for it must be pretty tough. Oh, you think there's that, just like a big tarp that they throw over them? I'll or? tell you what I do, Griffin. Yeah. Palm fronds. Palm fronds. Yep. Yep. It's that way, good. anyone comes by my house, in front of my house, is that? It's just a big pile of palm fronds. Nothing to see here. Hmm. Just what? some palm fronds. That Korean barbecue truck is covered in palm fronds. Palm fronds. I'm not <laughs> following the aesthetic, the theme. Justin, I want you to know, it really bothers me, and I want to admit I can't quite put a finger on it. I don't know that you did anything wrong, but something about getting in a car to drive to a food truck is weird mm. to me. Yeah. Because I was under the impression that the business model was such that the reverse was true. But if a food truck parks somewhere and then says, you have to come to me, I feel like maybe something has gone wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. But then if that's the case, you've limited, they've limited their audience to a Venn diagram of family dollar employees that would love a bond me on the go. Yeah. Right? Which is not, I'm not saying is zero, but is that a sustainable business? I don't know. Well, then what about 
drive it around, maybe play some music from the top to let people now know you're talking. coming. Now we're talking. And you just run out of your front door and get a bon me. Do you want bon me's? They're so crunchy, crunchy green. <laughs> now go on. <laughs> I don't know that I can do this again. We have pork flavor and have tofu, queen. <laughs> <laughs> tofu queen. Okay, was there a comment yeah, there? Yeah, important question. <laughs> yeah. We got it, tofu, queen. It was, that was a sort of interjection. An, in, an interjectory queen. I'm tired of giving away free money to other businesses that don't deserve it. I want to make some money for our business. That deserves it. <laughs> that deserves it. <laughs> because we're, we're promising young people. And we're doing we our best. A truck. Listen, if I could drive around in a truck and podcast, I would. I mean, fucking Alex Jones seems to have figured it out. <laughs> Let's go to the money zone. Squarespace. Deal with it. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm what? sick and tired of being nice, shit. and it's time to get real. Yeah. You want a website. You don't have a website. You don't even know how to make a website. Oh. Squarespace knows how to make websites, and they will help you make one. You could showcase your work, sell products and services of all kind, and promote your physical online business. It's 2020. How many times do I have to tell you about Squarespace before you get off your duff and then put your duff down in front of a computer and go to Squarespace while your duff rests comfortably in a chair? That way, you can get to Squarespace's beautiful customizable templates created by world-class designers, everything optimized for mobile right out of the box, analytics to help you grow in real time, free and secure hosting, and nothing to patch or upgrade ever. And then, once you've built your website, pick your duff back up, move it back over to where it was, maybe the couch, I don't know, and then sit and wait for a new season of your favorite TV show, I'm gonna say Mindhunter, I don't know. Go to squarespace.com slash mybrother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code mybrother to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. Then go on Twitter and let's talk about the new season of Mindhunter. <laughs> Travis is lo really lonely out here on the Yeah, edge. I, I, I've been trying to get, I don't even know if there is a new season of Mindhunter. I don't know when it's coming out. I yeah. could have said. I don't even know what Mindhunter is 100%. I know. Oh, Groff's in it, I think. I think the Groff's in it. And I Groff, could have Groff said sauce. Supernatural, and instead but I said you, Mindhunter, and, I, and I'm and kicking I, myself. I do appreciate adding a little spice travel variety to, know, to yeah. what is typically a, a, a sort of supernatural stew that you cook up week in, week out on this podcast. I know. Uh, Quip also is sponsoring this episode, and they have electric toothbrushes. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, fuck I'm, yeah. I feel like we're coming at the listeners pretty hot and heavy in this well, I'm to, I, You know what? People need, sometimes they need a like fire a under their duffs, Griffin. Talk about their Sh duffs hey, a lot. Show, show me your fucking teeth. Whoa. Show me those fucking hobgoblin teeth. <laughs> okay, now you're getting mean. I was trying Pop to- Pop out like, your grill. Let's see them. Ew! No, Griffin. You need like to <laughs> clean those. <laughs> no, you're trying to energize, Griffin, not, not like insult. Oh, let me try. Let me see your fucking teeth. Whoa. Uh, all right, all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, you need to maintain those using a quip, a smart electric toothbrush, because they have, they've gamified oral hygiene in a really fun way, because they've got a new smart electric toothbrush that can get you great perks as you form good brushing habits, things like free products, gift cards, and more. And there's a, a smart brush, it's for adults and kids, that connects to the Quip app via Bluetooth, and it tracks how well you brush, and you can get more tips like on white bed. tooth. Sorry, more like white tooth. Say again, like more white like white tooth, tooth. cause it'll turn. Cause yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Trav. Thank you. <laughs> you get it. So it, yeah, it'll track how good you're at brushing, and then it'll give you things like free products and gift cards and discounts from Quip and their partners, and. Uh, yeah, if you already have a Quip, you can upgrade it with a smart motor, which uh, lets you keep the features that you know and love and get all these other cool things. Uh, you can get brush head, toothpaste, floss refills delivered from just five bucks. So start getting rewards for your brushing your teeth today and go to getquip.com slash my brother right now to get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash my brother, spelled G E T Q U I P dot com slash my brother. Quip, better oral health. 
made simple and rewarding. Finally, there's a point to brushing your teeth. I know, right? I'm really excited. Yeah, my dentist is going to be fucking psyched. Video games. Video games. Video games. You like them? Maybe you wish you had more time for them. Maybe you want to know the best ones to play. Maybe you want to know what happens to Mario when he dies. <laughs> In that case, you should check out Triple Click. It's a podcast about video games. A podcast about video games? But I don't have time for that. Sure you do. Once a week, Kickback as three video game experts give you everything from critical takes on the hottest new releases to scoops, interviews, and explanations about how video games work to fascinating and sometimes weird stories about the games we love. Triple Click is hosted by me, Kirk Hamilton. Me, Jason Schreier. And me, Maddie Myers. You can find Triple Click wherever you get your podcasts and listen at MaximumFun.org. Bye! I want to munch. I want to munch. 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 The Welcome Munch Squad. It's a it's a podcast within a podcast. Profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. Sunset. In area, it's sunset yeah, sun years. Sunsetting, I believe. Yeah, it's in the twilight years of this bit. <laughs> so I come up with a better <laughs> bit, which you wouldn't think would be that hard. But here we are. KFC is going to introduce new signature dipping sauce Ooh. nationwide on October 12th. And as the crow flies, my friend, that is possibly the day you're listening to this. Kentucky Fried Chicken announced Thursday that it is launching a new signature dipping sauce that's sure to make fried chicken fans rejoice. Oh. Introducing KFC sauce. Hmm. Hmm. That's a signature sauce that's tangy and sweet cool. with a bit of smokiness sp- specifically designed to pair with crispy tenders. It kind of seems like they threw a lot of flavor words in there, huh? That's great. You get umami, umami, and umami <laughs> mixed up in there. Yeah. I like it. Uh, when we set out to create a new signature sauce, we went right to the experts, our customers. Whoa. To now, find now, out. hold on. <laughs> I've eaten a KFC, and I'll tell you right now, I am not. You're a fucking tourist. I, Don't call yourself a KFC customer. I mean, I. Well, there was a time in my younger years. Oh, sure. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Where you could- we went to our customers to find out what made a sauce best in class for dipping. It needs to be I- viscous. Yeah, it can't be so wet that it just runs right off the tender. <laughs> but also not too solid. No, I want to be able to put the tender in. The tender has to be able to enter the spicy liquid. <laughs> it is weird to think that dipping... The physical act of dipping was the primary concern, not the eating that would follow. No, no, no. That's secondary. If you get that primary thing wrong and you you either can't get the Tendo in there or the Tendo don't pick nothing up, well, after that, friend, what it tastes like don't mean nothing. Uh, That's from Andrea Zachminski, the chief marketing officer of KFC US. You know what? A lot of times they put the chief marketing officer in these things, and I kind of find that frustrating because, like, their whole job is to sell stuff, so how can I know I can trust yeah, you? Yeah, right. You know? wow. Give me, I give want... me the head of R and D. Yeah, I want a, I want an impartial person that doesn't care if I eat it or not to bring me my news. You know, <laughs> I'm just trying to get me to eat. I want to, I want to know what flavors they tried to put in the sauce, but couldn't quite make yeah. it work. I want to know their shortcomings. Well, the our, our first idea was chicken flavored sauce. We figured let's enhance it, so we just ground right. up a bunch of chicken. It's just like eating the chicken you know, <laughs> except much wetter. But then the problem was people just slurped the sauce and they left the salad chicken alone and we said this is too dangerous for any one man to have. <laughs> They came in and said they don't want the chicken anymore. They just want the sauce. It was too powerful. We had we buried it in a bunker underneath our HQ, where it shall remain and be studied by Un- top men until Rick and Morty does a fucking hysterical chicken sauce episode. <laughs> Andrea continued. We went through fifty iterations, and what? the response to this recipe was overwhelming. I'm assuming that response was, "Please stop making me eat this fucking sauce." <laughs> Just let me see my family. Let me sleep, for fuck's sake. (laughs) It's been 10 days. Beginning 
October 12th in all KFC U.S. restaurants. What a logistical effort this is. Fried chicken dipping fans, which apparently exists, uh, can enjoy the new signature KFC sauce along with a newly revamped core sauce lineup of classic ranch honey BBQ and honey mustard in addition to KFC hot sauce. Yes. Oh, thank God. I was afraid you weren't going to say the hot sauce, you know? Yeah. Woo. Those who love dipping do indeed take sauces seriously. Some going so far as to deem chicken an edible spoon for sauce or a vessel for flavor. Oh. That's a fucking sentence from this rest release. I kid you That's not. Good. Hey, why did you guys stop hanging out with Derek? Oh, you'll never believe the bullshit he said. <laughs> I know you know Derek says a lot of bullshit, but the other day we were eating fried chicken and he said yum yum edible spoon vessel flavor flavor vessel. And I had to get the fuck out of there as fast as I could and get the I kids out. I haven't seen him since. I left, I left Jean there. I haven't seen her since. I don't know what happened to her. I don't. I miss my wife. I'm so scared. For, for many, forgetting the sauce is a meal ruiner. In a recent survey from DoorDash, 75% of Americans say their meal is ruined if the sauces are forgotten. Oh, boy. And 20% say sauce is the single most important part of a great fried chicken meal. Okay. Sometimes can I just get a bag being, of sauce. <laughs> can you imagine being put into a position where you, a human being on the earth, has to try to come up with an opinion about the most important part of a great fried chicken meal? Um. Yeah, it's the chicken. It's, it's the, the chicken. Flavor, it's the chicken. The flavor it's of the, the chicken, chicken, how good it tastes to eat it. I let me. Okay, listen. I like dipping. I I don't know who the profile of this person is. I don't know who this person is who's like, oh, why do I get a fried chicken? Thank you so much for asking. Uh, I like to put it into things. Yeah, I like to. I like how it's a spoon you can eat, and I'm a dirt bag. Luckily for those who love dipping. Oh. KFC's extra crispy TM tenders are perfectly designed for dipping and L in the sense that they're edible yeah. and physical. Uh, they're perfectly designed for dipping and elevate the overall sauce experience. The hills and valleys created by KFC's extra crispy breading <laughs> form up. little lakes of sauce on every tender, <laughs> making the final bite crispy, crunchy, and bursting with flavor. And you know, if you're eating KFC, it may very well be the final bite. <laughs> Period. Oh, <laughs> so who knows? The, the wild topography of these crunchy boys. Uh, what's that? Oh, it's a hidden cavern full of delicious <laughs> sauce. Oh, and a dragon's gold. Just, I'm Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> Observe the gazelle as it <laughs> gallops through the different nooks and crannies. Uh, to celebrate, this is, I, it is amazing. I'm at this point of this press release, and I'm not even the part that I was really excited about. To, cel <laughs> to celebrate its new signature KFC sauce, KFC's head chef, Chris Scott, created three KF charcuterie oh, oh, boy. recipes. Yes. Oh, boy. You can yes. try it. Yes, I was waiting for it. So far, I was like, this is informative and interesting, but not that wild. Where's the actionable part? Where's yeah. the part that I can do at home? Well, good news from chef Chris Scott. Uh, <laughs> who under K duress developed these recipes. <laughs> yeah. K as, as terms of his resignation <laughs> created <laughs> as his final act. Who upon the KFC submitting his charcuterie recipes was handed a vial of the antitoxin for his family. <laughs> he printed it on the back of his resignation <laughs> letter. K their KFC charcuterie. It doesn't trip off the tongue, but you get the idea, right? KFC charcuterie. Yeah, okay. Board recipes you can try at home. <laughs> Charcuterie doesn't have to be all cold cuts, cheeses, and crackers. Oh, sure. It can also be delicious comfort foods like extra crispy tenders, secret recipe fries, and indulgent sauces. That's just a meal. Yeah. That's that's one of Colonel Sanders' standard meals. You know, charcuterie doesn't have to be meat and cheese. Sometimes it could just be a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it can be a child's laughter. <laughs> or uh, just some loose grass you picked up from the yeah. ground and sprinkled on someone's car. Char charcuterie doesn't have to be all cold cuts. It could be watching half of episode two in your hotel room while you're drunk. <laughs> it could be anything. It could be a fucking Toyota Yaris. Get out of here. <laughs> They are both fun to create and to eat. And I know around my house, 
we are definitely in need of some creative ways to break up the monotony of meals at oh home. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, so my we're fucking kids. KFC charcuterie. Oh. Oh, my fucking kids. Oh, my partner. Oh, it's so fucking boring. <laughs> Please, KFC. The process, the process and assembly of a charcuterie board have become a creative outlet for many and has recently become a social media phenomenon. On TikTok, oh. videos associated with the hashtag, hashtag charcuterie have been viewed more than two. 124.8 million times. And many popular charcuterie creators have gained notoriety for their elaborate and mouthwatering creations. You know what? I'm going on TikTok right now. If you see Trav, 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 if you see uh -huh. anyone doing a funny Fortnite dance on there, you make sure to let me know. I'm not seeing any KFC yet. Okay, let me just scroll down. Oh, Fortnite dance. Yeah, what's which one? I'll tell you, what I did see before I saw KFC was somebody making a McDonald's charcuterie board, and it looks like they figured that one out all on their own without any recipes. <laughs> they didn't need a press release or anything. Huh. Here's a Chick-fil-A charcuterie board. Oh, no. What's on, what's on that? Uh, Chick-fil-A <clears throat> food. And a little oh, New Testament. Okay. I wish it was easier to keep track of whether or not it was permissible to eat Chick-fil-A at any given moment. Just go ahead and assume no. Yeah. That's a safe assumption, isn't it? Um, one easy way to remember how to find this podcast is just go to kfcrcuterie.com oh, oh, yeah, yeah. and you're going to find Justin. that I fucking snagged it from them. But, and I, no, you know what? I'm going to make it redirect to Bojangles. I just oh decided my that God, instead. Justin. I'm going to do that. Or Zaxby's. No, you know what? Zaxby's. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see, the charcuteries are the KFC Little Dipper, a snackable com combination of KFC Extra Crispy Chicken Tenders, secret recipe fries paired with your favorite dipping sauces. So that's just a meal. A meal, a meal. Yeah. from KFC. KFC. And with a Sprite on the side. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, there's also the Kentucky Game Night Trio. That's Kentucky Fried Buffalo Wings. Okay. KFC extra crispy tenders and secret recipe fries complemented by KFC sauce and grocery items huh. like blue cheese, fresh celery, <laughs> and more. <laughs> it's, an, it's an admission that with a little bit of work and some products from your local grocery store, you could make this palatable. Um, Listen, we've talked a lot of shit about KFC, but KFC, if you want to partner with me for like a Travis McElroy meal, like a brand, like Travis McElroy, he's pretty cool. And we're going to make a meal that is, this is what Travis McElroy eats when he comes to KFC. I will happily do that. I, w I will do that. Please, this isn't. You have not done the legwork on Yum Brands, Travis. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to tell you this, but you have not done the kind of research into Yum Brands that you would need to. Oh, are you saying you have? To commit to something like that. Oh, are they, sh are, wait, Justin, are they shitheads? Everybody is. Oh, man. Twist. Ugh. Uh, so that's the that's the scoop on the KF charcuterie. Uh, you can make that at home. I guess what they're saying, what they're really saying with this, if if I could just be simple, what they're really saying with this is put it on a plate. Yeah, put it on a plate, and you'll feel better about a how wooden things are going. a wooden plate. Maybe, uh, and I, uh, this is going to mean different things to different people. Arrange it. Okay. Interesting. Speak on that. What, what so I Travis do... just explain how to do that in a way that screams class. Uh, I would take the tenders and kind of do them in like an alternating like log tower, like you would uh, perhaps Jenga, maybe. Oh, and that's going to look real good. And then just pour the sauce down the middle so it fills it up. Okay. That's funny, Trav. Yeah. And then put a little roof on top of it and then maybe sprinkle it. Uh, this is, I don't know how this will work with it, but like with icing sugar, so it looks like a snowy wonderland, and then maybe add some oh. little like marshmallow snowmen, oh, um, maybe glue some M&Ms on there, uh, uh -huh. a little Santa Claus. What were we talking about? Yeah. Uh, I was about to ask about. a question, unless Griffin has a Yahoo. Yeah, I mean, oh gosh, we should address this one. It was sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thanks, Graham. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm, I am going to call them Denise Asks. Ah. How can I make my dad like corn? Oh, Griffin, C or K? K C or K, C or K, C or K. It's a C. Oh, okay. All right. Good. My 100% my dad's like corn theory still holds. <laughs> 
With a K. Yes. Right. yes. We, need to, we need to be able to, it is so fucked up that these two, I'm trying to teach Henry the phonetic alphabet, and it's yeah. so fucked up that these two letters do the same fucking thing. It's, it's same thing. It's pointless. Get rid of one of them. Make them fight, and the winner, I think C should get to stay, because C can do a lot of other stuff. K is always- Oh! Cool. No, see, what I would say, Griffin, so yeah. what needs to happen is C needs to stay in its lane- Stick with that. Well, I guess that it's the S sound. We have an S for that, too. We got the S sound, C. Maybe get rid of the C. We have the K and the S. They are doing their individualized jobs. Okay, anyway. Okay. What if we just started pronouncing the band's name, Cahorn? <laughs> Cahorn. Cahorn. Help this person. How do they make their dad like corn? Play them some corn while they're eating corn. Um, I want you to hear the difference. Okay, there's a lot of great ways I can tell you how to cook corn. Because if I say it wrong and say, I like to eat corn, (laughs) then I'm going to jail. (laughs) Okay, there's lots of good ways to make corn. For me, for my money, nice elote. Now I'll eat that. I'll eat that. But I'll eat it on the cup. I like me a cornbread. Corn, okay. It's sweet. You know what I like? Cornbread, you put some broccoli in there. It's really I don't, great. <clears throat> I don't think we can extrapolate quite that far, Trap, because I think you could say like, well, there's corn syrup in your in your airheads that you're, well, you love to eat. No, I, I understand that, Griffin, but I'm saying cornbread, uh, corn like tortillas, uh, like these things, your corn flakes, these are yeah. pretty corn direct. You right. know what I mean? You I don't s- think, it's like saying you don't like eggs. Where there are so many different versions of eggs, it's hard for me to believe that. Right. Um, Justin, you got anything on this one? Have a really good Mexican street corn empanada at uh, Nomada, that bakery in Huntington. Yeah. Uh, that would be a great place because there it's served up on a little, first off, it's vegetarian. I love that. Uh, and also it's served up, there's just like eight pieces of corn on it, really. Okay. So it's kind of like you wouldn't even. It's like I do with my kids. Like you didn't even know you were eating corn. Oh, it's not inside. It's not inside the empanada. It might be. It might be hidden from me. An adult. See, you got to watch. See, there's visible corn. If your dad thinks you're tricking him, oh god, dads hate that. No, Uh, they dads do not like deception of any sort. So I remember one time my daddy was eating a cake that I made him, and he was just about to take a bite, and then he peeled the layers apart, and he found a piece of broccoli in there. Yeah, and he didn't talk to me for two weeks. Did I ever tell you that happened to me in school where everybody was doing like science fair projects or something like that? And then one one girl came in and gave everybody brownies and we all ate the brownies. And she was like, did you like them? They were all made out of green peppers. And I wanted to be like, hey, one of us could have been wicked allergic to green peppers. Pretty Thank risky you. gamble you just did there, Katie. Damn. <laughs> also Gross. Get my, fucking, get my fucking permission. Green pepper is my least favorite vegetable. And I do no, not like- No, you eat, don't mean that. I do you not like psychically the idea that I liked it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not willing to change my mind about that, Katie. Okay. What is your least favorite vegetable, everybody? My least favorite? What's your I, least favorite vegetable? I think a lima bean. It's hard to choose, because by and large, not good. <laughs> not good. That's yeah. not true. I love those green things, man. They make me feel powerful and strong. I think I think peas are like corn's evil nephew, and they taste so gross. And they have the texture of the texture of the the, the casing never quite goes away. It sucks, man. You don't want to hear about my life, favorite. I want to know Justin's least favorite vegetable. French cut green beans. I think they're fucking vulgar. <laughs> I want to talk about, when we're talking about vegetables, I found a new one that I like this week. Oh, oh boy. This is a story from my life. People are always asking us to share more stories from our lives. Yeah, we yes. stay on topic too much. <laughs> it's true. It's a story that happened to me this week. Uh, Blue Apron. You know I love Blue Apron. Yeah. Uh, they they uh, There was a recipe this week or, the, or last week, I can't remember now, but because time is uh, meaningless. And uh, it had sometimes Blue Apron does this to me where they'll get me hooked on a new ingredient. And I'm like, whoa, I'm wild about this stuff. And I can't get that in my house. No. They don't have it here. And this time it was delicata squash. Oh, yeah. Was this the butter chicken and squash? Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, this delicata was. squash, it ro- roasted up so good. Oh, my golly. I, lo- I was wild about this stuff. So then I'm putting it in an order at the grocery store. And I searched delicata squash, and it doesn't surprise me that they don't have it. In fact, the website crashed. (laughs) 
one thing that they did have was an assortment of five squashes in a bag. So I bought that <laughs> and then it showed up and I somehow missed the part on the, 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 the listing for the item, or maybe it wasn't there. I don't know where it said decorative, yeah, mm -hmm. decorative squashes. Mm -hmm. So then I got a problem. My problem is, one of them kind of looks like a small delicata squash, kind of like I ate before. And I don't want, they're real squashes, but I don't want to be, so now I'm like, could I cook you guys up and eat you? <laughs> but I don't want to be the guy that goes to the hospital yeah. for eating something that like fucking says decorative <laughs> on the back. So fast forward, I'm now the kind of guy who has, like, we're the kind of household that has a bowl with a bunch of squash in it to celebrate the season arriving. And I was wondering how that happened. How does that happen to you? That you just end up like, I gotta get some decorative squash for the season arriving. And if this is how it happened to me. Maybe they'll stick around and not go bad. I don't know. They're or, decorative. Or maybe in a moment of temptation, you will eat them. Justin, I, I, th I don't think you realize the bigger revelation right now is that in your house, you have vegetables and foodstuffs that are good for eating, and then this special, like, Wilbur in Charlotte's Web, like, these gourds have been given a reprieve. <laughs> this is, what you've got here is you have a fish in a goldfish bowl, while over here you're making some tilapia for dinner. Yeah. Right? You have, this you, is what you have pet betta fish at the Red Lobster restaurant you work at. It's fucked up. Those gourds have to watch you eat vegetables. Better than the alternative, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it kind of seems like you're saying, don't fuck up, gourds. <laughs> this could be you. <laughs> gourds or say to my other vegetables, be more beautiful <laughs> <laughs> and seasonal. You know, every vegetable is decorative depending on what you're into. That's what I'm saying. This is what is so challenging to me. Do you want me to not eat these gourds? You have to say not for... It also doesn't say not for eating. <laughs> It, it doesn't say recommended decorative. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I've got a farmer coming over tomorrow, Gourds, and if I get the green light, <laughs> you're, going in, a, you're going in a fucking casserole. Thanks so much for listening to our podcast. We hope you've enjoyed yourself. We sure have loved being here with you. I want to ask a quick favor of you. Well, Justin, before you do that, I want to ask you a quick favor because I want him to listen to one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, my God. A podcast called The Besties. Oh. Tell me about it. I Everything. listen to it, no joke, every week. It is my brothers, Justin and Griffin, as well as Chris Plant and Rush Frustick. Um, and they talk about video games, but they talk about video games in such a way that I, a video game enthusiast that knows nothing about like current video games events, finds fascinating. They tell you about games that are coming out, things you'll be interested in that you've never heard of, plus great discussions about games that you love. And it's not just like tearing the games apart. It really teaches you about like the gaming industry, teaches you about the games that are coming out. There's so much going on now with the console wars, with the new generation of PlayStation mm. 5 and the next Xbox. And hearing you guys talk about it has made it make a lot of sense for me. Uh, I listen to it every week. And you know what? Even BB likes it because she thinks you guys are very funny. That's so nice. You can find it on Spotify. Uh, so go there, listen to it, subscribe. It's out every Friday. I do not miss an episode. Highly recommend it. Thanks, Travis. Thank you, Travis. You're welcome. Now, I don't have anything anymore. Oh, what were you going to say? You stole my thing. Oh, you were going to talk about your own podcast? Go show <laughs> uh, the uh, the Avengers Zone Crystal Kingdom is now available for pre order. That is a graphic novel based on the arc of the podcast. Yeah, we did and did it again. The Avengers Zone comic dot com that's coming July 13th, 2020. One, where I have 2021, I, I one, the future. And I believe I have personally guaranteed in other venues, and I will do so here, that you will be able to enjoy that graphic novel in a crowd of people, and all will be safe. That was a big cold shot from <laughs> old cold Justin. big cold shot from me. But, oh, he's uh, pointing at the miss... stands where there's lots of people sitting close <laughs> together. <laughs> 
Uh, we got some new merch out. If you haven't gone to McElroyMerch.com and checked it out, you should. We got a new pin of the month uh, that is based on the phrase Tiger on the Table, designed by Sam Schultz. Uh, and the proceeds from that benefit the Marshall P. Johnson Institute, which defends and protects the human rights of black, transgender, and gender nonconforming people, as well as the Sylvia Rivera Law Project, which works to guarantee that all people are free to determine their gender identity and expression. Uh, we also have a new Candle Nights ornament by Lynn Doyle that is super cute. Cute, as well as a Candle Nights wrapping paper by Justin Gray, and this little jump scare pin of Justin doing the jump scare from the so TV good. show. It's, it's really so good. good. MacRoyMerch.com. Uh, also, speaking of books and things you can order, uh, we wrote a how-to podcast book called Everybody Has a Podcast Except You, and it's available for pre-order now at McElroyPodcastBook.com. Uh, we are uh, working this week, we like are recording the audio book, uh, and we're narrating it. And let me see, just reading again, it's pretty funny. I remember a really good time reading it. Oh, and good. I think you will too. It comes out in January. Pre-order it now. And in January, you can learn to make a podcast that you're proud of and enjoy reading a book. It's two things in one. Did you mention that we now have a thanks for reviving and keeping it tight shirt? <laughs> do we? Is we that do. up? Yeah, oh, that's oh, new. Fuck. Check that out too. McRoy merch and then pre-order the book at McRoyPodcastBook.com. That is a funny situation because we didn't say that. It was on a Jumbotron. So we had to reach out to the person that said that funny thing in a Jumbotron <laughs> to ask them if it was okay to make a t-shirt. And we told them we would give them money for the t-shirts and get this. They actually requested instead that a portion be donated to the Young Center for Immigrant Children's Rights. So what's up? Best fans of the world said it before. I will continue to say it. Um, that that's it, right? Yeah, I, I have yeah. a final. I have a final. Yeah, yeah. Oh, John Roderick. Been been a long winter. winter season. Season. So so to the 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 days to bed. Days to bed. Thank you, John. And thank you to Maximum Fun. Okay, so uh, this one's uh, uh, this one's sent in by Stephen. It's oh man, it's asked by oh man. Who's it asked by, Griffin? B Yach Chick. Oh boy. This is it, guys. Yahoo will tell you how old the answers are or how old the question is, right? Griffin, is it uh, possible that it's B yak chick, like a yacht? That's probably it. Okay. Um, this one is from, and it says this one decade ago. Whoa, isn't that wild that they would say that and not 10 years ago? If this website stays up for 100 years, will this say <laughs> one century ago? <laughs> This question from millennia's past, from the Mesozoic era, this one comes and it says, what are some exercises that don't give you yucky musculars? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that to that boy? I just <laughs> <laughs> That's Travis McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. Do you like mysteries? Are you a fan of teenagers? Do you enjoy the struggles of lonely middle-aged men? If so, may we recommend a TV show for you? Dick Town. The show is called Dick Town. And I'm John Hodgman. And I'm David Reese of Dick Town. Our show, called Dick Town, is available now on Hulu. John plays John Hunchman, a former prodigy child detective who used to solve mysteries for his classmates in North Carolina. Now he's all grown up, living on a shabby houseboat, and still solving mysteries for teenagers on Dick Town. And David plays David Purefoy, my former bully and nemesis, and now my driver, Muscle and only friend. There are mysteries popping off all over the place. The mystery of the controversial cosplay. The mystery of the maybe boyfriend. The mystery of the mumbling rapper. And there are celebrity guest stars popping off all over the place. Zach Galifianakis, Kristen Schaal, Paul F. Tompkins, Anna Akana, H. John Benjamin. So many stars. So please go to bit.ly slash dicktown. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash D-I-C-K T-O-W-N 
That'll take you right to Hulu, where you can watch all 10 episodes right now. John Hodgman is in full Wikipedia mode right now. Just go to the link and watch Dick Town and thank us later. Yeah, we made a TV show and called it Dick Town. (laughs) It's the only good thing that happened this year.